All right, everybody, welcome back. This is episode number 65 of Match Hat, featuring part two of my interview with the designer of Syndicate, Mr. Sean Cooper. favorite aspects of this show is getting to sit down with the people who made games like Syndicate. Games that I played so much as a youth that they practically defined me as a person. You know, I played, probably played Syndicate for hundreds of hours on my Amiga 1000 computer with absolutely no idea of who made it or what, what they were like or what they were thinking at the time. So it's always a great pleasure to get to meet these people uh, for me and hopefully, uh, hopefully for you too. Now I had a great conversation uh, with Sean. We've covered a lot of his early days in, in, in the previous episode. In this episode, I want to focus, of course, on Syndicate, his uh, real masterpiece. So without further ado, here is Mr. Sean Cooper. It was really cool to play. I mean, I just, I really played it to death. I coded it and also played it to death. Um, even for six months after the release, I was still sat there completing it with just the pistol or you know, just the shotgun or, you know, trying to do it with one, go, one guy. The games that I've really enjoyed writing are the ones that I've really enjoyed playing afterwards, whether it be multiplayer or single player. And I, and I think that's a measure of my, um, it's a measure of the games that, that, that I'm proud of, is the ones that I like to play and my friends like to play. The Syndicate, we, you know, it took us two and a half years, right? So. So we had two and a half years of playing various versions and uh, keeping people back from going home and saying, come on, let's have a quick game. Let's have a multiplayer game because we built it multiplayer. Let's have a quick game. Come on, let's kill each other. It'd be great. And uh, we did that every night, you know, and, and slowly you go, oh, it'd be really cool if we did this. Oh yeah, it'd be really cool if we did that. You know, and uh, I think when you're building games in that way, you start building relationships and friends and from the fun that you have. And my times building Syndicate are probably the fondest moments of my life. But it was really about a team of guys killing another team of guys. Um, that was the that was the main premise behind it. Um, and then we had to set it somewhere. So I think it was called Blue and Orange Bloke to start with. So there was these bunch of blue and orange guys in a squad and various ways of moving them around. They followed each other, they spread out. Um, in fact, a lot more elaborate than the actual release of Syndicate. Um, so very interesting controls around it. So we thought, oh, that'd be really cool. Um, and then we thought, well, we wanted to sort of vehicles for them to get into and drive around as well, which was, I didn't know how to do that, but we thought, oh, let's, let's give that a go, it'd be really cool to do. And then, um, and then after that, we had to set it somewhere. So I'm not sure who came up with the city, um, but we ended it. We ended by uh, we had this like, nice isometric engine. And we thought we could do something, um, you know, very uh, abstract, or we could go sort of, um, you know, real places, um, and then just sort of pushed into the sort of sci-fi because sci-fi lent itself to giving us non-traditional weapon, weaponry. So it was sort of easier to code that way because if you think about, um, you, you, you can just make up a gun and go, right, let's, let's do that gun. <laughs> and it's just, you know, it could be any, any sort of gun that you, that you wanted to do, you know, and the mini gun and, you know, obviously there was some traditional weapons in there. But they're like the laser that fired halfway across the map, you know, is, and the Gauss gun and, and uh, the Persuadatron, etc. So it just built on itself, you know, slowly, slowly, an idea of teams, real time, uh, a team, a, a group of um, robot things going against another group of robots 
just sounded really cool from a gameplay mechanic point of view. And then, of course, it evolved into the, into what we know as Syndicate. I think the artists were definitely inspired by um, Blade Runner. I don't think I'd actually watched the film at that point. I think I, it came after. Um, for me, it was more... Um, I was a big fan of kind of Star Wars or, um, you know, all those things that, that kids like, you know, from a sci-fi point of view. So it was very kind of... Um, I was very, I was very young in my mind, so I was still, I still felt like a teenager. Um, so I was still thinking in things very, very simply, you know, and, and the artists were thinking it in very, you know, elaborate and this and that. Um, so that so I think the match of the two, bringing the two together, the simplicity of, of the way that a fourteen-year-old thinks about um, subject. And then these artists that were like, oh, it'd be really cool if it was like this, and it was like a Japanese-y, like Blade Runner and stuff. And I, I was like, yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. And uh, I think I think when when you can buy into someone else's thoughts, you know, like I'm going, let's do some Japanese symbols that are really brightly lit. Oh yeah, that'd be really cool. I'm really that, that sounds excellent because because I've probably seen a, a picture of something that looked really cool somewhere. Um, so I think the I think the marriage of the people that were in the team um, and the and the hire that they that Peter had made uh, of the art director uh, for the whole of Bullfrog, I think it was just a really nice match, uh, and I think it really sort of gelled well together. I mean, it's a really key. Um, there's a couple of artists in that group that that I still talk to today, and they were very special at what they. Um, of how they thought about it, you know, I didn't give them the right tools. I, I wish I could go back and mend all the tools so they weren't so fiddly and uh, horrible to use. And I probably stifled their creativity a little bit. I think the marriage of that of that group and uh, you know Alex Trous and, and Peter, you know, Peter Molyneux uh, as the sort of the, the the core design team. I think it it just. I think Peter said what well, he he said to me. It was Bullfrog's finest finest hour, and you know I'm not sure if he actually thought that. It was sort of about ten years ten years later. I'm not sure why he was saying it, but it certainly felt like that way to me. Um, it was the most fun. I think if people look back, it was probably the most fun time at Bullfrog at uh, that period. I'm not sure who came up with the story. I think it was Chris Hill actually who came up with the. Um, with the story behind what we were doing. <laughs> I mean, we were just adding stuff that we thought was going to be cool, you know. Let's make them run faster, you know. How, how do we do that? Oh, we give them barnet legs, you know, so it's the six million dollar man kind of thing. Um, yeah, and it was just, we, we were just having such a cool time. So any any suggestions that were coming from anywhere, I think they were flying around. I think that a lot of people were focusing on this game, so. There's a lot of lot of talk all the time about stuff and going out and getting drunk and talking about things. I think the only thing that didn't make it in was the was the multiplayer. I think we did everything, um, everything that we wanted to do. I think more weapons was was definitely on the cards. I, I definitely wanted to get an airstrike in there at some point. It would have been nice for other people to experience the multiplayer side because that's how we that's how we tuned the game. That's how we that's how we made it. Um, I think quite tight the gameplay and, and very well balanced. We had eight, eight players in there, so there was eight eight lots of four uh, syndicates, and that was just that was just intense. It was so brilliant. It was so brilliant to play it because you're always trying to split your team up so you didn't get all killed at once, and so there was lots of strategy coming in. And of course, as you play it more and more and more, I was I was developing more strategies. You know, Peter would come in and develop into different strategies and we would talk about them and go, oh, that's crap. All right, well, we'll try and get rid of that. How do we sort of make that less crap? You know, and so I think by that multiplayer side, it was just, oh, it was just, just playing it was just awesome. Yeah, I mean, I wish that everybody could have been there to see it because it was just great tuning this little baby into something that was uh, awesome at the end.
I was a kid, you know, I was a kid, I was 21, 20, 23 years old when that game came out and, you know, I was a kid, you know, I was, I was, I, I think my brain was not developed yet. I was, I was still at 16, 17, 18. I, I do remember asking for a pay rise at that point and I think it was 25,000 pounds. I said, let's, can I have some more money? <laughs> and he said, why should I give you that much? Well, I've just done a great game. He goes, all right then. And uh, I think I went from 13k up and uh, up to 25,000. So that was pretty good.